Sometimes shaitan comes to us on a regular basis and one of the first things he wants to take from us is our belief and our faith and he wants to really make us from those who are losers. Shaitan has promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I will show you this man will not worship you. He will worship everything but you. So today people worship graves, people worship trees, people worship human beings. People consider a man higher than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People consider a man equal to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. People start saying, oh man in the grave, you give me paradise. And if you ask him, why are you calling out to the man in the grave? He will tell you because that man is purer than me. I am too dirty to go straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have heard this. We have seen people say this. How can we say that when Allah has chosen you to utter the shahada yourself, your relation with Allah is a direct link. That is the beauty of Islam. It is Hinduism and Buddhism and Christianity and other faiths that have added a medium between human beings and their creator. Islam came and taught us removal of all those mediums. It is you and above you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way to get there, the messengers may peace be upon them all. And the last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to us to teach us how to get to Allah. But he himself did not say worship me besides Allah. He never said that. In fact, he warned the people in a hadith. He says, La tuturuni. Be careful, do not go beyond the limits with me. Like the Christians went beyond the limits with Jesus, the son of Mary. You should always remember and say, Abdullahi wa Rasuluhu. He is the slave of Allah and his messenger, a slave. Some people get upset when we say Muhammad is the slave of Allah. They say, don't use the word slave. But that is the hadith. Abduhu wa Rasuluhu came from the hadith. This is why we say, Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa Rasuluhu. And we bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is abduhu wa Rasuluhu. His slave, a slave because he obeys the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam obeys every instruction of Allah, it makes him a slave. If I obey every instruction of Allah, I become a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if I disobey the instruction of Allah, am I a slave of Allah? Am I a true slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah forgive our shortcomings and may he make us from those who realize and understand. So when we have understood that the messenger came to us not to invite us to worship him but to invite us to worship Allah directly then we are true Muslimin and this is why in the Quran we know that the Christians started worshiping Jesus may peace be upon him when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came the Christians were already worshiping Jesus may peace be upon him so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the question and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds that particular question in the Quran. If you take a look at Surah Al-Ma'idah, towards the end, Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary, did you tell the people to worship you or your mother besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you the one who said it? And he will say, Subhanaka, glory be to you, all praise is unto you, O Allah. How could I have said something that you did not permit me to say? I did not have the right to say it. Had I said it, had I uttered it, you would have known it. One of the reasons of revelation of that particular verse is to clarify for us that we do not worship a Nabi of Allah. So how can we worship a pious man in our midst? Allahu Akbar. If we do not worship a Nabi of Allah, we worship Allah, the one who sent the Nabi.